Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is matchsticks game and it is a medium level problem. So this particular problem says that there are two friends A and B and they are playing a game of matchsticks. So there are a total number of n matchsticks on the table and at each turn, for example, the player A has his turn. So he can choose any number of sticks from 1 to 4. So he can choose 1 stick, 2 sticks, 3 sticks or 4 sticks. right? And the number of sticks he chooses are removed from the game. So if he chooses 3 sticks, there will be n minus 3 sticks remaining. Now they play this game turn by turn and the last person to pick a matchstick wins the game. So basically who cannot pick any matchstick will lose the game. And player A is starting first. So we have to tell uh, the number of sticks player A has to pick initially so that it is guaranteed that he wins the game and if it is not possible we have to print minus one right so this is our whole question so if you have not solved this question yet you will be really amazed by how simple the solution is but there are some like very simple details that you need to understand first so we are going to discuss about game theory so game theory is very interesting and uh, although it is not very difficult application of game theory here but still we will uh, discuss some very basic things Right. So uh, let me define two things. So the first thing that I want to define is winning state. Right. So what is a winning state? Now a winning state, it is a state from which the current player can make a move such that he directly wins. Directly wins or, or so this is the first case that he can make a move that he directly wins or make a move such that the opponent get, gets a losing state, right? So either of them can be true, right? So the condition is that it is a state from which the current player can make a move such that he directly wins or make a move such that the opponent gets a losing state, right? So let me just represent it for with one now, right? So we are just going to represent it with one. Now, let me define a losing state. What is a losing state? So it is a state, it, it is a state from where, from where no matter what move the current player makes, the opponent will always, always get a winning state. Right. So, from a losing state, a losing state is a state where no matter what move you make, it doesn't matter, you can make all the possible moves, you will always get to another state which is a winning state. Right. So, this is how they are interdependent on each other. Right. So, let me just represent it with 0. Now, let us discuss winning and losing states in terms of our original question. So, let's say, let's say, uh, let me just create an array. So let's say these are some values of sticks, right? So let's say this is n equals to 1, this is n equals to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Let us have these values for now. Now you will realize from 1, 2, 3 and 4. I am always at a winning state. So let me just write one here. Why is it true? Because I can choose any number of sticks from 1 to 4. 1 to 4. Right. So if I am at, if I have 1 6, Alice can always choose 1 stick and the number of sticks remaining will be 0. Right. So Bob doesn't have any choice, so he will lose. So this is a winning state for player 1. Now if I am at 2, I can always choose 2 sticks and I can win. If I am at 3, I can always choose 3 sticks and I can win. If I am at 4, I can always choose 4 sticks and I can win, right? So this is how we know that these 4 are absolutely winning states and this is our base case of our uh, array. Now what happens when I am at 5? So from 5 you will realize that if you choose 1 stick, you will go to this particular state which is a winning state. If you go to this particular state, this is also a winning state. If you go to this particular state, this is also a winning state. And if you go to the last state, this is also a winning state. So no matter how many number of sticks you choose, your opponent will always get a winning state. 
so this itself will be a losing state right so just remember what the condition said so the condition said that it is a state from where no matter what move the current player makes the opponent will always get a winning state so you see from position 5 no matter where i go i can subtract 1 i will go to 4 i can subtract 2 i will go to 3 i can subtract 3 i will go to 2 i can subtract 4 i will go to 1 and all four of them are winning states for the opponent right so no matter what move i make i will always go to a winning state for the opponent and hence my current state should be a losing state so the sixth position is also going to be a winning state why is it so because according to the definition of winning state we discussed it is a state from which the current player can make a move such that he directly wins so this was the case in the first four values 1 2 3 and 4 or make a move such that the opponent gets a losing state right so if i am at position 6 if i am at position 6 i can subtract 1 and the opponent will get this 0 right if the opponent gets this 0 that means the opponent is in a losing state so from 6 i can subtract 1 and the opponent will get a losing state hence it is going to be my winning state right so this is going to be my winning state another winning state is 7 because from here i can subtract 2 and i will be at my winning state so let me just change the color so consistency this is also winning state because i can subtract 2 and go here right now from 8 this is also a winning state because I can subtract 3 I can, and I can go here to a losing state for the opponent. Similarly for 9, but for 10, you will realize it is going to be a losing state because if I subtract 1, a winning state is there. If I subtract 2, a winning state is there. If I subtract 3, a winning state is there. If I subtract 4, a winning state is again there. So there is no way for me to escape from here. No matter what move I make, my opponent is always going to get a winning state. So this is going to be a losing state. Right. Similarly, this pattern will repeat itself. There are four ones and then one zero, then four ones. Right. So if Alice is starting a game, for example, Alice is starting a game from seven. I want to make sure that Bob or the second player lands at a losing state. Right. So how do I make sure it? I will just subtract two from it to make the second player land at a losing state. Right. So that is why if I'm at seven, I'll subtract two. If I am at 9, I am going to subtract 4 to make sure that the second player lands in a losing state and my win is guaranteed. Right. So, you will realize that this value is actually equals to n mod 5. Right. And when n is a multiple of 5, then the answer is going to be minus 1 because the first player is already at a losing state and he or she cannot win. Right. Now, all of these winning states and losing states, all of this stuff is only valid till both of them are making optimal moves. Remember, both of them should be making optimal moves. For example, the first player had three sticks, right? So the optimal move from here would be to take all the three sticks and win the game directly. But for some reason, let's say the first player decided that I don't want to like win the game right now. I just want to take one stick, right? So if the first player takes one stick, the number of sticks remaining will be two. From here on, the second player can decide, okay, I have two sticks, I can directly win the game now. So, you see that the first player could have easily won the game, but he did not play it optimally, hence the second player won the game now. Right. So, all of this stuff is only valid till like both of them are making optimal moves. So, the final answer will be, the final answer to this question will be, if n mod 5 is equal to 0, then the answer is going to be minus 1. Otherwise, the answer is going to be n mod 5 itself. Right. So, this is the whole question. Now, there is just some extra useful information that I wanted to give. So, this part is not actually very important for this particular question. So, you can totally skip this part. But I am just telling you because this is important in general game theory. So, to find whether the current state is a losing state or a winning state, there is a mathematical formula to it. So, for example, from my current position, I can go to n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, n minus 4. Right. So, you see that these values 1, 1, 1, 1, these are called Grundy numbers, right? So, let me just denote g of 7. So, let me just denote g of 7 as Grundy number at position 7, right? So, if I am at position n, right, my answer for position n will be max of mex of g 
एन माइनस वन जी एन माइनस टू जी एन माइनस थ्री जी एन माइनस फोर सो दीज आर बेसिकली ऑल द मूव आई कैन मेक सो इफ आई वॉन्ट टू कैलकुलेट द ग्रंडी वैल्यू फॉर पोजिशन एन I will try to take all the moves that I can make from the current position and take its max value. Max is minimum excluded. It is the minimum non-negative integer that is not present in the sequence, right? So, for example, I have a sequence like one, two, three. The max in this will be zero. If I have zero, one, two, five, the max in this will be three, right? So, if I want to calculate the Grundy value at position n, it will be equal to the max max value of All the moves I can make, I can go to n minus one, n minus two, n minus three, and n minus four. Right? How does it help us? Right? So you will realize that it actually very well matches with these two definitions. So let's say we define a losing state where no matter which move we make, we always get to a winning state. So a winning state here was denoted by one. Right? So if all the values are one in my case, then their m e x will be zero. So this is what exactly a losing state is. Right? What is the winning state? If I can get at least one position where the opponent gets a losing state, so the losing state was defined as zero. If there is at least one zero, my m e x will be one, right? Or some non-zero value. So in this particular case, all the non-zero values will denote that the first player will win, and the zero values will denote that the first player will lose. So let me just reconstruct this array with the same definition, and it will be much helpful for you. So now we previously we just defined with zeros and ones. Now we are going to construct the same array with the help of Grundy numbers. So for the first position, the answer is one. So let's say this is position zero when there are no sticks left. So obviously this this is a losing state. So I will set zero here. Now at position one, I can only go to this particular position. So the m e x will be one. For position two, I can go to This particular position or this particular position, so the m e x will be two. Now for three, I can go to these three positions, right? So the m e x is going to be three. Now for four, I can go to these four positions, right? So the m e x m e x for this value will, is going to be four. Now for position five, I can go to I can go to here, 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 and here. So you see, all of them are non-zero values, and the index is going to be zero. Again, if I move forward, I can go to sixth position, and the index will be this, 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 and this. So for four, these four values, the index is going to be one. Again, I move one step forward, then the index is going to be the index value is going to be two, right? So you see, all the non-zero values denote that the current position is going to be a winning state for the first player. Who is starting the game? And zero is going to be a losing state for the first player who is starting the game, right? So this is how Grundy numbers works in general, and uh, you can apply this method to all other similar games as well. It is very you can calculate Grundy of n is equals to m e x of all the Grundy values or all possible moves, right? So this is how we can solve this particular problem. Although the second part was not at all required, you can totally skip it. but the first part or the or the first observation is very important to find for you to find the answer right so let us have a look at the code the code is very simple if n mod 5 is equals to 0 then i can just return minus 1 otherwise i return n mod 5 itself right so let me just quickly submit it and show you that this particular code works so you will see that it passes all the test cases and this is absolutely correct i hope that you guys were able to understand the solution if you guys did then definitely consider dropping a like on this video And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments. As your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you, and it will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So subscribe to this channel because I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. So in case you are one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of cost, and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye bye.